Hello everyone, welcome to Six Days a Sacrifice, the fourth and final part of the Chozo Mythos. The end is near. Apparently this is one of the strangest games in the series as well. It's supposed to go some very odd places, so I'm interested to see what happens. Just like the previous three games, it is of course completely free, so I'll have a link in the description to where you can check it out for yourself. Let's begin. Yesterday, I saw the body of the bridge keeper engulfed in flame, and I saw the bridge created by one third. Tomorrow, I saw the soul of the bridge keeper reduced to ash, and I saw the bridge created by two thirds. Today, the mind of the bridge keeper shall meet with its destiny, and I shall see the bridge extend between the realms, and the many children of the king shall leap and dance and sing praise in his name, for great is his wisdom and his benevolence. The Book of the Bridge. I should have done this the moment you came into this world, demon child. May God forgive me for having a part in your creation. Why did you kill me, brother? I helped you when you were injured. I bandaged you when our father made his mistake. No mistake, young one. Now do you see why I tried to keep you away from this creature? It has no understanding of human ways. You're wrong, father. If you'd have even given him a chance to be normal. Cease your prattling, Matthew. It's time to put an end to the horror I unleashed. What are you doing, Father? Father, no! Father! Father! Hundred ninety six years later and a hundred ninety six years earlier. All right, here we go. So, yes, I actually thought that this fourth game used text parsing just like the third one did. Much to my happiness, though, it does not. It uses the normal point and click interface, you know, right click to access your inventory and stuff like that, right click on something to use an item on it. Very standard, which is wonderful. Oh, I love the fact that it's returned to the point-and-click interface. It's so much better than text parsing. If there's one thing the third game taught me, is that it's that I hate text parsing. So, very nice. And I'm not sure if the game's going to explain what's going on in the storyline here, but just to catch you up, I'm playing as someone who's doing, who's doing some sort of a routine inspection at the offices of Ophthalmology, which is a strange religious group which I'm guessing is tied to Chozo and or the bridge between realms and things like that. I'm guessing. I don't actually know. See, so yeah, I'm just a normal dude doing a routine thing who's most likely going to be caught up in something very not routine, given that the name is Six Days of Sacrifice. I'm expecting some weird stuff, such as, well, religious sacrifices. Let's take a look around. Oh yeah. <laughs> something you can, something fun you can do is try to examine your own eyes. That's pretty much the one thing I can't look at. Fair enough. Let's look at this plant. The climate-controlled environment in here really seems to be making it flourish. There aren't even any cigarette butts in the soil. Well, that's good. Is that normal for people to put their cigarettes out in plants? Because that's a douchey move. Some woman's magazine, put here to help visitors pass the time, I guess. I'm not the right demographic. Crushed leather. Very nice. Doesn't look like it's ever been used. I hate sitting on leather sofas. The material feels horrible under my body. They do feel kind of weird, don't they? Yeah, I agree. I don't really like leather sofas. I mean, they might look fine, but... Yeah, they're weird. Pamphlet. Alright, probably some religious pamphlet, given that this is some sort of religious center. Some kind of pamphlet on ophthalmology. And that's the religion whose headquarters I am currently standing in. Let's read it. 
Add it to my journal, yep. Life becoming a struggle. Need a guiding hand. Want to be part of the world's fastest growing family? Optimology is a religion catered for you, taking the best parts of all previous religions to make a great new way of thinking. Join Optimology today! Oh, hello. Are you Mr. Garriott? Get out of my way, you fool! Uh... Mr. Garriott, I'm from the county... S council? Uh, my name's Decabe, I phoned you a week ago. About running an inspection of your facilities? Oh, yes, I remember. The council has been informed that you may be extending your premises... without planning permission. I just need to take a look around to make sure you aren't. Is it... is it completely necessary? It's just a precaution, entirely routine. Could you come back another time? Well, actually, no. I have to get this done before the end of the week, and this is my only free time slot. I see. Is there a problem? No, not at all. Well, why don't I take you up in the elevator and we can tour the building? I'd be obliged. Where's the... <laughs> oh my god. Day one. Holy shit, what an opening. July 24th, AD 2189. <laughs> I told you I have no idea who he is. Then why should you care? I'm a doctor for God's sake. It seems terribly convenient. You don't think, if he was our agent, we would find a way to get him down here without smashing him to pieces? A broken neck is not something I call convenient. Don't think me a fool. He arrives now, of all times, and you insist it's a coincidence? What else could it be? Uh, he's awake! Can you hear me? Do you know your name? Can you tell me your name? Decabe. Theodore Decabe. My name's Samantha Hardy. What's happening? How much do you remember? Hey. Stop talking to him. I don't want either of you saying another word until my employer gets here. This man is seriously injured. He has to be returned to the surface and taken to a properly equipped hospital. I will not tell you again. No one leaves, no one breathes a word until my employer tells me what is to be done. God damn you. Not a word. Okay, I assume I'm playing as Samantha, right? I can't seem to move. She's wearing the spectacles and lab coat that denotes a scientific choice of career. Wait, am I playing as the guard? A tall and athletic man, physically in his early 30s, wearing an absurdly old-fashioned... Wearing absurdly old-fashioned clothes. Isn't that Trilby? It looks like Trilby. Wait, given the year that it's set in, could it possibly be Trilby? Uh, I don't think so. Unless... I, I don't know. Maybe I'm playing as the guy who just fell down. I suppose I probably am. The small unwashed medical cot is spotted with very familiar looking blood. Yes. I bounced myself gently to test the mattress and a jolt of pain ran up my spine. I wonder if I get to play the entire rest of the game as him, because if I do, I'm going to be a little bit limited in what I can do, because I apparently, what, broke my neck? Yeah. Uh, speak with her. Psst. Samantha looks at me questioningly. Okay, well, we can't actually talk or he'll notice. I could try mouthing something. Or pointing. I suppose I could point. Point to the privacy screen. Samantha shrugs. She has no idea how to activate it. Okay. Point to the guard menacingly. 
Yes, make him shame him. Point in shame. Samantha shrugs and shakes her head, indicating she doesn't think she can reason with or defeat the man. Let's mouth the word employer. She points at me, then mimes cutting her throat meaningfully. <laughs> okay. Uh, stop communicating for now. What do you bet I'm going to get stuck on the very first puzzle? I also can't help but think about the reason I'm here. Or at least the reason I was in the ophthalmology place. It was because they had they had heard, what, reports that they were unlawfully, like without permits, extending their building? What were they making? Assuming that's true, which it probably is, were they making some sort of a Chozo demon sacrifice room? Hmm. Whatever it is, it probably wasn't pleasant. It's a console over there. It appears to be a touchscreen console of some kind. What the hell am I even trying to do? Like, what do I... What do I even want to accomplish? I guess I just want to leave, but that's not gonna happen. I can't walk. I could try to call somebody. <laughs> I still have the lobby pamphlet. Wonderful. Who should I call? Uh... The police would be a start, yes. Excuse me, police. I appear to have traveled through time, I think. Nothing but static. I can't get an outside signal if we're underground. Ah, right. My office. Right. That's not going to make a difference. Let's talk to the guard. I probably shouldn't, but... Here, I'm going to make zombie noises at him. Arr! What's the matter now? His condition may still be degrading. The facilities here are very understocked. Move aside, I'm going to check him. Ooh. Okay. That's something. And now... Talk to her... Aww. I don't see any problems. Psst. Huh, could I do something while he's checking me out? Point to the console. She shakes her head and mouths the word password. Hmm. Mouth a word password. Samantha shrugs. She has no idea. Damn. Point to the desk. Get away from there. Okay, so maybe I could tell her to go to the desk when he's over here. Maybe. Uh, I'll put the door in the north wall. It seems to be malfunctioning. She shrugs. Point to the guard. I think I've already done that, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's do that again. Maybe if I'm faster, I can talk to Samantha. Surely he would notice, though, wouldn't he? I can't talk to her right now. Okay, da damn it. Oh, what if I... No. Point? Can I point while he's walking back or something? Hmm. I'm not really sure exactly what I'm supposed to be accomplishing. Do I want to knock him out? Do I want to convince him to fuck off? Like, what am I even trying to do? I don't really know. There's some burnt paper there. Looks like an official memo. The bottom half has been burnt off. And the trash can's been used to burn documents. <laughs> I 
I wish I had to use NPCs. You don't use NPCs, you talk to them. Wait a minute. What is this option? Journal. Cell phone? No, she wouldn't want it. Huh. What about the desk? I mean, there's the burnt paper. It's gotta be the burnt paper. Can I point to the desk and then talk to... No. So how am I supposed to do this? I need... Quiet. Okay. Just try the others. Yes, yeah, so this is the only one that works. I can't use my mouse for anything right now. I can only use it right now. I take the slip of paper from his pocket while he leans over. He doesn't seem to notice. Wait, there was a slip of paper in his pocket? Uh, okay. I sure as hell never saw it, but anyway. Okay. Cool. What's this say? With a meaningless sequence of numbers on it. Okay, well, I know exactly who to give that to. Let's slip it to you. I palm the note to Samantha. She glances at it, then nods in understanding and pockets it. Okay. Try the console now. She points at the privacy screen, then at the door in the northern wall. Okay. Well, she doesn't know how to actually activate it, right? Oh, no. I can't see you, but there's only one way out of here. Hmm. Oh, okay. Well... It actually does kind of help me. Because now she can use the console. Go ahead. Okay. She's pointing at the door in the north wall. So, what does that mean? The console controls the door? It seems that something is banging on the door from the other side. Oh, it's banging on the other on the door from the other side. I thought it was just like opening and closing on its own. Hmm. <laughs> what if I talk to him now? I can't. All right. Well... It's a holographic privacy screen. It lets us see out, but prevents others from seeing in. It seems to be controlled by that console. So what about the door on the, n on the northern wall? Oh, oh, what the fuck? That is not who I wanted to let in. You. I remember you. Uh... Don't look. But what's going on? Don't look. <laughs> Looks like we're loose again. Can you walk? Just about. It hurts a lot. How much do you remember? Look, I'm just a council inspector. I was sent here to run an inspection on the building. Some lunatic upstairs pushed me down the elevator shaft. Then I wake up here. Could you please explain to me what the hell is going on? You fell to the very bottom of the shaft. You are now within an underground laboratory complex. What do the ophthalmologists need it for? Ophthalmology is a front. A money-making, crowd-pleasing facade to disguise the true organization. Which is? A cult. They call themselves the Order of Blessed Agonies. Oh, I thought that's what it would be. 
A bunch of masochistic freaks who worship some mad death god. Okay, so why do they have a laboratory complex? Do you mind if I ask... Why were you sent to inspect the building? The, the police told us they received a tip. That the Optima... I, I mean, the cultists were building something. Since they didn't have planning permission, I had to see if there was any truth to it. It seems there was. This complex isn't doc documented in any of our records of the site. I think you'd better talk to... I think you'd better talk to Janine. I have a feeling you're the person she's been waiting for. Who? The other prisoner. She and I were being held captive down here by one of the cultists. You mean the... man who was guarding us? Where did he go, anyway? The man in the hat was just a mercenary, I think. Hired to guard the place. Our captor is still around somewhere. Jeanine and I only just escaped from our cell this morning. We were looking for a way out when you arrived. I dragged you in here and the guard found me. We've got to call the police. No can do until we get to the surface. Something's blocking our communications. But with the three of us against one man, we should be able to negotiate our way out. Janine's supposed to be finding us some weapons. Find her. I apologize for placing a burden on you in your current state, but I have urgent matters to see to. Dr. Hardy, what happened to the guard? What was behind the door? Why didn't you let me see? Find Janine. Once the cultist is our host hostage, I will have time to answer all your questions. God, talk about being in a sorry state. <laughs> Look at me. What do I have, a broken leg, a broken arm? Is my neck broken or something? Jesus. It's actually quite interesting that they're starting me off in such a... non-powerful, like, role. I mean, I'm not able-bodied anymore, so I'm not gonna be able to fight back by, like, using a weapon, really. I mean, I suppose I could fire a pistol or something, but... Still, if anybody got close to me or we ended up, like, grappling each other, I would totally lose. I'm just so weak. I'm about to keel over any moment. Alright, let's use this thing. It's just gonna activate the screen, right? It's too technical for me to operate. Yeah, so the tall man was banging on the door trying to get in. Oh god, I can actually go in here. I don't want to be in here. I mean, it's a normal room, but that's where he came from. Alright, let's take a look at the bin. The one that people have burned stuff in. Nothing in it but ashes. What about this paper? From Acolyte Garriott to Acolyte Derivin. Our preparations are complete. Feel free to evacuate yourself and your staff when you have finished burning your records, but make sure Canning and the prisoners remain. Preparations are complete. They're bridging the gap between the realms, aren't they? That's what they mean by the preparations, isn't it? I think that's what they're doing. I think they've finally done it, or they're about to. Why else would they say preparations are complete? And you can evacuate and just burn all your records. This isn't good. Our master will also remain, and make his own arrangements. I will evacuate last when I have given the building and complex a final inspe- It just ends? Oh, right, burnt. It probably belongs to the chief medical officer. The papers on it seem to be in disarray. All the drawers are empty. Like they've been emptied in a hurry. Yep, somebody was burning their records. Trying to get rid of any trace. 
It's a large cupboard for storing medical supplies and records. Let's open it up. It's full of medical supplies I have absolutely no idea how to use. Was that there before the guard was chased off? I don't remember. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I really don't want to touch it. Okay, fair enough. Janine. Janine, what is that? Spectacles. Oh my god. Those spectacles have like the... Oh, hello. Those spectacles have like the tiniest... Like... Hitbox I've ever seen. Well, one of the tiniest. It's like... Three pixels. Look at that. Anyway. These are my glasses. They must have been left here when I was pulled out of the elevator shaft. Are they still okay? One of the lenses is smashed. The other is curved out of shape. I'll take the intact one and discard the rest. One of the lenses from my spectacles. Curved out of shape. It seems to have some magnifying properties now. Oh, magnifying glass. Perfect. That'll soothe my broken neck. As the tall man approaches me, I can look at him just a little bit closer and admire the fine details on his attire. Shells, presumably for the storage of medical supplies. Oh, anything useful? As I suspected, it's empty. They're completely bare, the boxes are all empty. Every single one? Yeah, every single one. That probably just leads back out to the hallway, right? Mm-hmm. Alright, I think that's a security room and that's a laboratory room. Can I continue on down the hallway or is that the end? Oh yeah, oh, wait. Who the hell was that? I don't know if I should chase them. Alright, what do I have to lose other than my life? Alright, some keypads and a huge door. I wonder what's contained behind the door. Wait, that's Samantha. Does this just... This just loops around? Or did I go the wrong way? Let's go around again. Make sure my grip on reality has not been... loosened. It's a huge steel door, strong enough to be a blast door. There's a sign on it reading, Central Hub, Authorized Personnel Only. It probably requires an access card. Okay, that's a slot and that's a keypad, so I need both a key and the password. It's a panel of numbered buttons. Yep. Five, 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 five. Nope. <laughs> Alright, so it's a four digit number. Gotcha. That's really messing with my head. The fact that I'm going all the way to the right of the screen and then once it transitions, I go to the left of the screen to then go back to the right of the screen. Oh, what? I don't know if this is meant to be like a circle and it just, you know, since it's 2D, it doesn't really represent it. Or what, but that is doing my head in. Anyway, let's take a look at the first place here. Seems to be sleeping quarters. Oh, there you are. Uh, oh, hello. Sorry, I thought you were... Who are you? My name's... DeCabe. Are you Janine? You're not one of the cultists? No. One of them apparently dropped me down an elevator shaft. Dr. Hardy told me to find you. So you met Sam already. We were being held captive, her and me, for the last week or so. We were only able to get out of the cell this morning. 
She mentioned that. She said you would have found some weapons. Oh, sure. Here. You came from outside? Are they sending someone to help us? I wouldn't know. But they must have gotten my message. We have to take these guys... We have to take these guns to Dr. Hardy. Maybe then we can get out of here. I'll wait here. Why? Please, just... Don't make me go out there. I couldn't face seeing... him again. Who? The cultist? No. And anyway, you better get along. Okay. I'm sorry I couldn't be more help. I better get along. <laughs> I said better get along instead of better get going. Actually, it kind of works. I think that might work. Does that work? Get along? It sounds weird. I think it might work. I don't know, I have to have to look up the word in a dictionary, but I think I've heard something like that before. Even if it is odd. Well, I've got some guns. I've never held a gun in my life. They feel heavy and unpleasant. Alright. Here you go. Ah, excellent. Now we certainly have the upper hand. The cult is just through the door. Just through this door. All we have to do is secure him in the holding cell, then we can negotiate our release. Will Janine be joining us? No. She said she was too afraid. Afraid? Odd. Well, anyway, we'll both take a gun. Even a man with two limbs out of commission can fire a gun. Indeed. Turn around slowly, Canning. No sudden movements. Hardy. So this is how your employment ends? With betrayal? Employment? Shut up. If there was any betrayal here, it was when you lunatics locked me up. We had no choice, Hardy. You refused to listen to reason. I said shut up. I'm taking you to the cell. Stop right there. If you point your gun at me, I will fire. Damn you. You never understood, did you, Hardy? There's no point in resisting us. We have God on our side. What the hell is going on? Take them to the holding cell. I will... Who... I am the caretaker. I am the guide. They're only unconscious, and will awaken soon. Go to the sleeping quarters, and seal yourselves in. It is not wise to roam this place at night. But who are you? A friend. Now go. Sam. I'm sorry, Janine. They overpowered us. Oh, God. I can't take much more of this. When are they going to send help? It seems they did. Him? Why did you tell Janine the same things you told me, Mr. DeCabe? I, I'm a council planning inspector. Someone tipped us off that the optim... I, I mean, the cult were building something. They sent me to see if that was true. So you see, Janine, your call was answered. You sent the tip? A council planning inspector. It's almost laughable. But now there's no way we're getting out of here. Yes, there is. We're going to overpower Canning and make him make him escort us out. Excuse me. You tried that and it didn't work. We just have to keep trying. Will you please listen? I beg your pardon. I fell down an elevator shaft this morning. I'm tired. I'm in pain. I don't know where I am. And all you've done is boss me around and evade my questions. I want to know who the hell you people are and what the hell is going on. I apologize, Mr. DeCabe, but there was no need to shout. Perhaps there is time to fill you in now. Sorry, where shall we start? 
Okay, start with, um, everything. What is this place? You're in a small laboratory complex under the Ophthalmology Building. Which, as I've already said, is a front for the Order of Blessed Agonies. The complex is laid out around a large circular chamber they call the Hub. Oh, it is circular! Okay, that explains why I wrapped around. They've definitely got something important in there. But neither of us have been inside. Okay. What is the Order of Blessed Agonies? They're an insane masochist cult who think pain is the answer to everything. And from what I've seen, they're very creative in the ways they inflicted upon each other. They worship some mad demon god called Chuzo or something. <laughs> Chuzo. <laughs> I've never even heard of them. I've heard of Ophthalmology, what with all the celebrities that are members. Ophthalmology is just a moneymaker. It funds the true organization, the Order. They hide behind the acceptable front to keep themselves secret. Saying you want to hurt people to purify them causes a lot of concern for the authorities. Yeah, I'll bet. Huh. Ophthalmology. She said a lot of celebrities are, like, in ophthalmology. So it's publicly recognizable. Is that like a spin on Scientology? It kind of seems like it. Maybe that's what Scientology is all, all about. It's about trying to bridge the gap to bring Chuzo into our realm. <laughs> I can't believe she called it Chuzo. You know, just because she did that, she's going to be the first one to die. Well, I, I guess the guard was the first one to die. She'll be the second one to die. Alright, so where are all the cultists now? We don't know. They used to be all over the place. They started drifting away soon after they finished construction of the facility. Canning and the Hat Men are the only ones left as far as we know. The Hat Men. Oh, sorry, heart, Hat Man, not Hat Men. It's like they intend to abandon the place with us inside. If they haven't already. Who are you? I'm Dr. Samantha Hardy. I'm a scientist. I'd tell you what kind, but I fear it would go over your head. My name's Janine... Pff, I can't pronounce that last name. I'm a freelance journalist for a couple of magazines. Mainly celebrity gossip stuff. Okay, I get why Samantha's here, because she's a scientist working for them, or was. But how is Janine here? How did you get here? I was looking around the ophthalmology headquarters. I wanted to do a feature on them for the magazine, since so many celebrities have joined them. I was just having a little snoop about when I discovered this place. And then, of course, they threw me in the holding cell. Sam was already there. I'd been doing a little contract work for the Order, here in the labs. Turns out they really don't want anyone to know about the stuff they've been doing here. What kind of stuff? I prefer not to say. But you won't tell me, either. So you don't want to betray client confidentiality? They threw you in a cell. That's not it. it it's just that... It was work I'm not proud of, which will probably reflect poorly on me once this is all over. I'd rather take steps to ensure it doesn't get out now rather than regret it later. Please don't press the matter. Hmm. We escaped from the cell a few hours ago. Then you dropped in. And that's as far as we know. Why are we being held here? Oh, gee, I skipped something. But if that was all, why haven't they just killed us? Maybe they need us for something. I don't like the sound of that. I think only the cultists can answer your question fully. Indeed, and given the name of the game, I'm thinking they want us for a sacrifice. Or maybe three sacrifices. Is the plural of sacrifice, sacrifice? I guess it's just sacrifices, but sacrifice sounds cooler, doesn't it? Who is Canning? Is he the leader of the cult? 
God, no. Before the others evacuated, he answered to a guy named Garriott. And even he seemed to be subordinate to someone they call the Prince. But I don't think I've ever seen him. Canning is just some low-level acolyte ordered to make sure we don't escape. Personally, I think he's just as much a prisoner down here as we are. I think they wanted to get rid of him for some reason. But he's too dense to notice. He's still following orders like a faith-blinded sheep. Who is the man in the hat? I think he's just some mercenary hired to act as a security guard. You mean, the guy dressed as Trilby? Who? You know, Trilby. The dashing gentleman thief? From those old horror movie series? Serials? The Defoe Manor murders? Hotel horror? I don't watch many movies, I'm afraid. Why would a security guard be dressed up as a cult character? I can't explain it. It's just ridiculous. They say Trilby may have really existed. I've read some newspapers from around the late 20th century. How is that relevant? Never mind. <laughs> he was dressed as Trilby. That's why I thought he actually might be Trilby at first. Huh. Strange? Very strange. Is it just a reference to the previous games? And nothing more? A way to tie them together? Or is there actually something to that? Who is the man in red? I've never seen him before, not until just then. Who's this? A completely bald man in a torn red robe. He helped us get away from Canning and the guard. I've never seen anyone like that. Did he come in with you? No. It was just me falling down the elevator shaft. Okay, that's all. Good. So, now what? Now, we think of a way to... Oh. What? This door has been sealed with a time lock. We won't be able to open it until tomorrow morning. Who could have done that? Canning? I doubt it. The man in red told us not to roam the hallway at night. Presumably, he has taken steps to ensure this. For crying out loud. I have to get home. I have to be back at work tomorrow. We are all inconvenienced, Mr. DeCabe, but whining like a child is not going to help. I know, it's just... I know. We should take the opportunity to rest. We can discuss our escape in the morning. Day 2. July 25th, AD 2189. All right, well, that's a pretty good place to end this episode. Yeah. Um, what I'd heard is definitely true. This is one of the strangest games in the series. Very strange. With the time shifts. Yeah, so we're further... I'm trying to remember when the others were set at. I know this is before the... Uh, the Seven Days of Skeptic, the one set in space. And obviously it's after... The original stuff with Trilby. So at this point, he's got to be dead. Probably dead. Assuming he hasn't traveled through time, which at this point, who knows? Because there's the magical monkish dude that seems to protect us. So yeah, that magical monkish dude is the same guy that revived Trilby at the end of the last game. Huh. The Caretaker. He seems to have some sort of a vested interest in the Tall Man and Chozo, and everything to do with that. Strange. Oh, I'm really intrigued so far. And I'm also really glad that it's the standard point-and-click interface as opposed to a text parser. And I'm also happy to see that I got through the first hour and what little puzzling there is completely made sense and I haven't had to use a walkthrough or anything like that. Very, very nice. 
It actually has made sense so far. Will this be the first game that I... The first uh, Chozo Mythos game that I don't use a walkthrough for? I'm crossing my fingers. I'm hopeful. We'll see. Got four more days to survive. Or, I, I guess five more days, actually, because I'd count day two as still needing to be survived because I haven't gotten through it. All right, well, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I will be back soon.